don't like to think about the fact that surgeons make mistakes. I would say that a lot of them are probably failures of slowing down. Yes, these things happen. Yes, we need to understand them. If we don't talk about it, we have no way of making it better. It's as if surgery changed once Carol Ann Moulton started thinking about it. I challenge people on their assumptions because I believe I have had my eyes opened in a different way and I can see things through a different perspective. My name is Dr. Carol Ann Moulton. I'm a hepatopancreatic obiliary surgeon at UHN. I knew from probably about grade four that I wanted to be a doctor. My parents are ministers in the Salvation Army, going overseas and helping people. So certainly the motivation to do it was to, to help people. What draws everybody to surgery, it's result-oriented. You can work with your hands. I like the challenge of opening people up and fixing people on the spot. In any day, you feel like you make a difference. I decided after my training that I wanted to do some further studies. My research at the Wilson Center focuses on surgical judgment. One area of particular interest in my studies is how we get into trouble in surgery. And particularly I've looked at how expert surgeons get into trouble, often in routine cases. The more we do something, the more automatic and routine it becomes. For me to open a belly and to do a big case is not a big deal, but there are certain moments in the case where it is a big deal. And you know, because we're so routine, we don't think we have to concentrate too much. But then occasionally you might find that you've done something stupid because you've kind of drifted into that kind of automatic mode and not paying attention. Like a, a surgeon being rushed to get to their kid's hockey game, being affected by the last time they did a procedure and had a complication, feeling reluctant to call for help because of what that might look like to their junior staff. The phenomenon that we studied was called slowing down when you should. It's really looking at or characterizing a new phenomenon in surgery where we need to uh, transition or change from a mode of automatic behavior and automatic thinking, which many of us get into over time, to a more effortful uh, or focused mode of thinking. An error is by definition attributable to at some point not slowing down. There's no doubt it resonates. I remember probably in the early 90s, early part of my career, when I had a major complication. I was pretty bent out of shape for a long time. Having strategies to stay focused or mindful is not something we talk about. What she's done is she's described an important moment or event that we've all been experiencing for years. But by putting a label to it, first it's very important as uh, so now we can see it. Slowing down when you should is actually the most important thing, is making sure that you're in the mindset of being able to pay attention to the things that matter. Once we started talking to the surgeons about it, they would stop me in the corridor and say, you know, I had two slowing down moments yesterday, let me tell you about them. Carol Ann is helping us dig into this problem, to look at it head on, not to shy away from it. There's no doubt it's impacted. It would have impacted my career a long time ago, but it certainly has benefited my career even in the past five or six years. To understand the things that might influence us on a moment-to-moment -moment basis is the important stuff in all of this. Providing a language is simply, I think, what slowing down has done. In a Whipple operation, tell me where you think you would normally slow down. I think it's important that we teach young 
surgical trainees, that there are other states of mind that influence our decisions and influence how we perform. If you want to summarize the moments where you're going to be paying a particular more attention, where would it be in this guy? So, I mean, entry uh, for sure may be uh, an issue. And I've been pretty forceful with uh, teaching it and saying straight out, these are the pressures on us, you know, I'm going to call for help, but maybe I'm feeling like I shouldn't, but I'm going to, and so kind of being fairly open about it. Now we're starting to look at appropriate slowing down. How do you teach slowing down? It will tackle the hard problem of how we have better clinical outcomes, of how we have better patient safety. It's not to embarrass or denigrate, but it's really to teach. What I hope to see in a few years is a curriculum that teaches a lot of what we've talked about. I believe it's the right thing to do, uh, to make us all better physicians, better surgeons, and improve patient care.